Are we alone in the vastest of space? Planets are being formed all the time out there in the universe. How are they exactly formed? Is Earth unique? Or is it quite special? Or is it just an average, tiny, insignificant planet in the middle of the vastest of space? These are very big questions. I'm joined here tonight by Dr. Barbara Ercolano from the Institute of Astronomy at the University of Cambridge to answer some of these big questions. Barbara, welcome. Um, what are the chances that we are alone in the vastness of space? Um, I think this is a question that has a lot of people divided on its answer. So there are, I can see that there are two camps. There are the camps of, um, of course, SETI, which is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, which um, believe uh, in the uh, mediocrity principle, which basically what it states is that there is absolutely nothing special about the Earth uh, and its location in the universe. Of course, you know our, uh, our view of being in the center of everything is, is slightly shifting, and so there may be some uh, truth in that. And certainly I optimistically hope that uh, there is nothing special in Earth itself. However, SETI has been uh, running for uh, many years now, and there has been no, um, no, no detection of, uh, of communication, anyway, with uh, our intelligent uh, life forms, in the, in, 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 even in our galaxy. And so this has prompted the other camp to really come up with the rare Earth hypothesis, hypothesis in which, basically, while um, Earth itself as a terrestrial planet may be not so hard to make, maybe not such a rare occurrence. The exact environmental um, uh, conditions that occur on Earth may in fact be much more rare. And therefore, if one believes that we need exactly the same environmental conditions as we have on Earth in order for life to actually begin, then the rare Earth hypothesis might actually hold. Of course, there are a couple of things to note here. First of all is that life may actually not come just in the shapes and forms that we see on Earth. Uh, and the other thing is that you can actually do an, a numerical experiment to see whether even a rare Earth hypothesis, uh, intelligent life is completely out of the question. And so what the rare Earth hypothesis actually says is that uh, there are many factors that influence the birth of life on a planet. And they include things like the planet mass, uh, the planet location with respect to the central star, but also many things about the star itself, where it's located in the galaxy, the so-called galactic habitable zone. And so if one takes all of these uh, many factors into, um, into consideration, then one can build up a, a probability function of what are the chances of basically life in our galaxy. And now I'm just talking of our galaxy rather than our universe, and there are, of course, 100 billion galaxies in our universe. But even if we just do that, uh, the, uh, some astronomers at the Royal uh, Astronomical Observatory in Edinburgh did that last month, and they came up with uh, quite optimistic numbers that in our galaxy, uh, at least uh, 1,000 to 10,000 primitive animal forms should exist on planets. If we then talk about uh, advanced civilization, like maybe our own or better, then this number unfortunately dro drops to about 100 or just over 100. However, that's still significant. But unfortunately, that doesn't mean that we will be able to be in contact with them because, of course, of the vastness of space in our, in our galaxy. But this paper was very interesting because they actually also looked at the probability that we could actually be in contact, and they were non-zero. And so I think that things like SETI should be happening, should be going on, and maybe we should just try and direct our efforts uh, in a more efficient way. In the blink of an eye, just since 1995, we've discovered at least 400 planets. How is this being done and how quickly is our discovery progressing? Well, our discovery is progressing extremely quickly. Uh, for the good and bad of us theorists who are trying to keep up with the observational discoveries. And there are various methods for uh, looking, at, looking for planets. The most uh, successful to date is undoubtedly the Doppler shift method. It's also known as the radio velocity method. In a nutshell, what you're looking for is to look at the wobble in a star that is caused by the interaction with its orbiting planet. So if you look at the light that comes from the star, there are some signatures of this wobble. And we are now able to look at wobbles which are as small as the velocity of a man walking on Earth. Unfortunately, that's still not quite uh, precise enough for what we need to look at the wobble caused by planets like the Earth. 
So we still have some way to go, but uh, with our um, we, we look at, with our techniques, uh, in particular with. Uh, Photometric transit, which looks at the dimming of the star when a when a planet passes in its in its front, uh, we think that within the next three to four years we will be able to find terrestrial planets like the Earth if they are indeed as frequent as we believe they are. As quickly as we discover these new planets, planets are also being formed out there in space. In basic terms, how are planets actually formed? Well, in basic terms, uh, planets are just formed by taking a sand, a, dust, a speck of sand, and sticking many more specks of sand together until you can build a pebble and then a boulder and then make boulder collide to make planets. What happens is that in the uh, immediate in circumstellar environment, so just around very young stars, there is an enormous amount of material, which is gas and dust. So one can think of dust as these small specks of sand. Because the dust tends to sink, to very high density regions of the circumstellar disks, uh, there are many collisions between sand grains, between these dust grains. And therefore, these dust grains end up sticking together and growing from sizes that are just like a submicron or of just one or two microns to sizes as large as uh, centimeter size, as meter size, and then finally kilometer size, so resembling some of the asteroids that we see in our solar system. When these asteroids gravitationally interact with each other, they cause more collisions, more accretion, so we can actually end up building the cores of planets that we see today. Now, these planets may be formed in a region where there is a lot of gas, and therefore this rocky core may actually gravitationally attract some of the gas around it and end up like a gas giant, which is a planet that looks like Jupiter. So a bunch of gas with a stone in the center. But if there is no gas left, then you have to basically end up with something like the Earth, which is still not, not, not a bad result. Barbara, thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure, thank you.